All right, we're gonna we're gonna start off taking a look at um, the activity that we had for last time. The activity we had for last time is we wanted to create and play with a mobile version and a not mobile version of of a site, and we're gonna do that through the use of redirection in PHP. And so let's take a look. There's been a question about the one and uh, being an issue of not getting the right. Um, background image. I, I seem to remember there being a problem with one of the CSS files or media queries or something. Let's take a look. Is that what you had? Yeah. And there was supposed to be a background image here. Yeah, like I said, I okay. put the, the one that had the, like okay. the source files, but even that was... All right. So I, I pulled down locally to this machine this, and let's add it. PHP file. All right. And as we go through here, admin device with, okay, media query looks correct. All right. So what you're saying, in essence, is you are not getting that advanced CSS. Okay, what did you say then? Uh, no, it's like it's the background picture that is that does belong to advanced CSS. Just okay. Are you getting this code? Actually, Let I me guess, answer that question. No, you're not getting that code. No, it doesn't look like it. Because well, your stuff goes all the way across. So, I repeat, you're not getting the CSS file. Right? Here's your two CSS files, basic and advanced. You're getting basic. You're not getting advanced. Okay, so that's what I said when you said, no, that's not the case. So I just wanted to show that, yeah, that is the case. You're not getting that advanced CSS. Now, let's see if the media query is a problem. Let's get rid of the media query altogether. I know we don't want to do this ultimately, but we can do this as a debugging tool. Let's just cut the media query out and save. And looky there, you are getting that. So, again, this is what I had stated before. I believe there's a problem. Well, we're in IE. There's no media queries in IE. Right? Unless you put that workaround in. So, let's put the media query in here, and let's open it up in Firefox and see if it works in Firefox. Because if it works in Firefox, then we know that it's the media query, uh, I'm sorry, then we know that um, the media query is correct, and it's just that IE doesn't apply the media query. If it doesn't work in Firefox, then we know the media query is incorrect. So let's look at this. this in. Okay, yeah. so it doesn't display that, so there must be an issue with the media query. Yeah. Let's take a look at the media query. I, I did and, test it on my Firefox as well. And so, okay, that's let's take out the word only. I think that will matter, but it's just for good measure. 
screen only and min device width. Alright, let's check my Okay, I have the same issue that that style sheet isn't applying. So there's a problem somehow with the media query. Screen only and min device width. Um, this, and again, I, I know we talked about this in class. I just don't remember what the solution was. Screen and min device width. Looking for the media query. screen and main device with oh no px so that's what you need device with device width, screen only and min device width. Anyone, what am I missing? Did you Google it? Yeah, I did. <laughs> you copy and paste from somebody else's, see if there's any differences? I did not do that yet. Let's try.
screen in min device width 481. The syntax was wrong. I brought the PX next to that. Do I have a space there? Yeah, a space before yeah. the number. I had a space before the number, okay. Uh, but anyhow, the bottom line is you weren't getting a media query right. All right. Um, what I would suggest with any of these, as far as troubleshooting goes, this is a good lesson because, uh, again, I um, at some point I detected that, I think, and I talked about it in class if you look at one of the videos. Um, but it's important to get a sense of what's going wrong when that isn't going wrong. Like right off the bat, you know, it looked like the background image wasn't appearing. When we looked at it a little more closely, um, we found that none of that second style sheet was appearing. So that means, number one, that um, there's a good chance that that media query, either there's something wrong with the CSS file or that media query isn't correct. So the first thing I did in troubleshooting it is I got rid of the media query, so it always applied. And when we did that, we saw that the CSS file was indeed correct. So the problem had to be with the media query. And because it's Monday, it took me a few shots to get the media query right. But at least you're then you're troubleshooting the right thing, all right, as opposed to uh, trying to, uh, you know, troubleshoot any, any different number of things. So it's important, I think, to take a systematic approach. The other thing that you could have did is, like, if you notice the image didn't appear, is to change the color in the style sheet and see, do you, are you getting the new color, for example? Uh, and that would tell you, is there a problem with the image or is there a problem with the CSS file? Or again, is there a problem with the media query? So, um, and anyhow, um, yeah, sorry for giving you that one to copy, but again, uh, yeah, that, uh, I'm almost positive we had talked about that uh, in one of the lectures, how that media query uh, on mine wasn't correct. So. It didn't register just because there was one extra gap between the colon and the four? Um, well, let's see if we can break it. That What's seems that? let's 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 put in a space there. Save. And there was no PX too, if you remember originally. Alright. So that wasn't the problem. Let's see. Originally, there was no PX after the number. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There was a space between the, the, the culprit was a space. After we put the PX in the space, uh, there was a space between the number and the PX. You got to bring it together. Yeah, it, it, right. Right. It doesn't, doesn't see it as being a, a unit. Right. Okay. Other questions about the activity we had last time? Are we talking about the one with the... Uh, the one with the include files and uh, adding an include file and getting different behavior based on whether it's mobile and or desktop. Now, what was the homework due from uh, last week? Because we didn't go over any of that. Didn't go over any of what? The, the homework thing is due like, today or tomorrow. Excuse me? Um, with, uh, we're supposed to make our CSS compatible with like MP or something like that? Oh, all that is is running it through the validator. Is it? All right, yeah, that's, that, that's discussed in the book. Okay. That's just a subset of, of the CSS and HTML. So just run the code through the validator and that will, that will take care of that. All right. That should, that should do it. Um, the, the, the only, you know, the only thing with that is that that, um, what was I going to say? That is, is, is a subset of the full CSS. So uh, just make sure that you run the code through the validator and that, that should catch any issues that you have with that. Other questions about the activity?
activity or anything else before we go on. Um, my aim is to cover a little bit more about the server-side scripting than they do in the book. Um, if for no other reason, just to, to start getting you familiarized with include files, because those can be very powerful, even, even if you're not, even if mobile isn't a consideration, which mobile is always a consideration, but even irrespective of mobile, um, include files uh, is, is something that's very effective. Because again, what that allows you to do is put a chunk of code in one place. All right. So the navigation for your site, you can put in one place. And you can put it in an include file, and then all your pages, all your PHP pages, will reference that include file. And so if you need to add a link or you need to add something to that navigation, that change gets propagated through your entire site. Very similar to how you can uh, put something in an external CSS file. And then you can point all your pages to the same CSS file. And... Um, If you make a change in the CSS file, the change is reflected throughout the whole site. So again, I use include files. Well, this is your example, but there's include files here and here. All right, and that's the syntax for them. And effectively, what the what the PHP does on the server side is it takes the contents of that file and it pastes it right in that spot. All right. So if it's <coughs> HTML or, or regardless of the kind of code, it gets pasted <coughs> and then executed there. Those uh, include files, mm -hmm. obviously when you go to them, they're kind of like their own glorified standalone div in terms of the HTML information there. Mm -hmm. So could, could that div that is in the include file, could that be given an ID or a class name? Oh, absolutely. Like I said, I'm just trying to walk gingerly here. So, uh, absolutely. You could, give a, you could give an ID, you could give it a class, you could refer to it in your CSS, um, anything along those lines. And that would mean that when it comes back into this big brother there, then the style sheet would be there mm -hmm. waiting. Yep. Okay. Because obviously the trying to make sure I get size and scale and well, let's, correct uh, let, let's look at uh, let's look at your example that I have uh, locally here. Um, if I go in and edit this, you have an include file called universal INC. Let's go in and we'll edit with notepad. And you have universal content. We can go and put something here. We can put an ID on the div. ID equals universal or something like that. Then we can refer to that in the style sheet. So let's go into basic and edit the basic style sheet and say universal, give it a background color of white. Because remember, when PHP, when the server processes the PHP code, what it's going to do is it's going to effectively, wherever there's the word include, it's going to paste that code in there. So that div is just like it was part of the original web page. So when we go and do that then, and we go and view it, there that div has the different colors. So I can go put CSS in. If you do JavaScript stuff, you can do JavaScript stuff with it. Uh, that's part of the page. It just lives in another file. It, it's similar to how CSS files are part of the page. They just live somewhere else, all right, so that they can be shared among pages and, and, uh, and access that way. So, yes, absolutely, you can assign classes or IDs to, to the div files or to, to the divs that are contained in that. Now, it just so happens that a lot of include files are going to be divs, because div meaning a section of the page, a division of the page, and you're going to build, you know, uh, a section in one include file, a section in the other file. But it doesn't have to be uh, a div. You know, it could be several divs. It could be an unordered list. It, it could be anything. 
It could be a, a, a link, you know, or it could be a set of links. So div is, is um, I don't want to say this, it, uh, a, a div would be probably pretty common, but it's not like it's required for that to be a div. It's not even required to be HTML code. It could also be a chunk of PHP code if it needed to be. For example, one thing I would suggest would be to take this chunk of code and create an include file for it. All right? That way you wouldn't have to uh, go and put this code in every place. Think of what happens. If you remember this code we got from a, a third-party site. We got from the, the detectmobilebrowsers.com. Apparently, what they do periodically is they ad, uh, uh, change that code as there's new mobile devices out there that have different user agents associated with it. Well, if you had this code on a bunch of different pages, you wouldn't want to have to go back and change all those pages every time they added some devices. So what you could do is you could put it in an include file, and then you'd only need to change that code in one place. So in that case, it would be some PHP code that would live in an include file. Other questions about the activity? I'm going to try to pull up the validator here. The, the markup validator will get validated when you go into... Um, when, if you copy and paste your code, the fact that you have a doc type will tell it to validate using that standard. So you don't have to do anything special. I'm just seeing if you have to do anything special when you validate the CSS. CSS validator. I direct input. Hmm. More options? Yeah, validate. If you use you can use handheld for that. Oh, mobile. There we go. So try validating it with uh, mobile. I would imagine that would validate up against that spec. All right. We were going to discuss Werfel today. All right. Um, I had problems installing Werfel on our server uh, due to the fact that we don't have the right version of PHP. Werfel requires something like PHP 5.2.1 or 5.1.2 or something like that. requires a newer version of PHP than what we have. So I was able to get it working on my local machine, uh, but I was not able to get it working on uh, the school server. This is something, it's a little tricky to set up and configure, so I wouldn't uh, necessarily uh, require you to do it on your own, but you are welcome to go and download it and, and try to do it. Let me give a brief explanation of what it is, and after we get the issue with our server straightened out, we'll come uh, and cover this in more detail. Um, our little snippet of code up here, We can test and we can identify if it's a mobile device that's doing the browsing or not by looking at the user agent. All right? So this, this gives us some tools in, in deciding, like, where to redirect folks or maybe what style sheets to include or whatever. But not all mobile devices are the same. All right? Um, think of an iPod an iPod Touch versus a iPhone, all right? There's one glaring difference between the two. The one can make calls, the other one can't, all right? This is a mobile device just as a small screen Nintendo DS is a mobile device, all right? So there's considerable variance between what is a mobile device, all right? And therefore, our test to determine whether it's a mobile device or not might not be sufficient. It's a black and white test. Is it mobile or not mobile? We want to do better than that. We want to know, based on the type of device, what the capabilities of that device is. All right? 
Now they go through an example in the book, and again, when I get it enabled on the server, we'll go over it in class, but for now, read through that example. In essence, what they do is they put code in to create a link on a device that can make phone calls that when you click the link, it actually makes a phone call for you. Obviously, you can't do that on an iPad that doesn't have a phone, or you can't do that on a desktop machine. All right? And they do that by taking advantage of this Werfel database. What this Werfel database is, is it is a um, database with a lot of different devices in it that gives you an idea of what the device's capabilities are and you can query that database through a set of predefined functions, uh, in other words, the API. Let me bring down the code even though we won't be able to run it here. So we'll look at it now, and then once we have it installed on that, you'll be required to do some little functionality uh, using this database. All right, I'm going to copy this folder over. This PHP. And it's going to take forty minutes to copy that over. Wow. Let's see what it's copied so far. Well, you know what? Never mind. We'll cancel this. We don't need all the files. We will... Let's just pull this file over. over. Sure. 